You may remember that this was the last design on the strain wave gear with timing belts that I worked on. It's a Lazy Susan bearing, you can see the balls there, and some 3D printed parts with some skateboard bearings forming the centre axle of the uh, the wave generator arm which was with two um, nodes on it and skateboard bearings with rollers on. Now I found with the HTD5M belt that's inside here it was quite easy to uh, generate a skip on the belt there. That's one you can't hear it, but it, that's happened. There we go, snap. So relative to the theoretical torque multiplication we should have got out of this, uh, we weren't seeing it translated because uh, it was all gr um, grunching up and getting stuck. So uh, I went back to the... Uh, the drawing board and I decided to uh, try and go into uh, something a little uh, bit more stable in terms of support um, for the strain wave uh, generator and this is what I ended up with but I also decided at this point people are always going to want to put this um, in something with a motor driving it so we've got some uh, 59 newton centimeter NEMA 17 stepper motors in the back I think that's a 6011 bearing quite a large one uh, but not too expensive uh, inside uh, this was the last iteration I got up to and uh, what we'll do is we'll go through this uh, I'll show you how it works um, talk about its performance and then we'll go back through the design iterations that took us up to this point and talk about where we're going next so here we go this is a uh, elliptical uh, strain wave generator with Corporal ball bearings inside, and it's uh, around uh, a 45 uh, to 1 uh, ratio on the gear. And I'll turn it now for you, and you can get a feeling for how it works. And you can immediately hear that my 3D printed um, ball bearing races are a uh, poor substitute for nice hard metal ones and unfortunately although there's a nice a nice looking motion to this sadly it doesn't turn into usable torque here's the uh, the elliptical strain wave generator and yeah it's not smooth um, I don't think the, the, the sparsity of bearings is the challenge I think it's the, the surface finish of the print um, and it's made up from the elliptical wheel in the centre, obviously uh, recessed race there, circular one on the outside, and the retainer for the bearings. And I've taken this front plate off, which had a support bearing uh, for the stepper motor shaft. Now this ring of outer teeth is meshed with the belt in a couple of points where the the, um, the wave pushes it into it and it glides past on, on the sides but that's a two mesh point uh, uh, strain wave generator and you can see a roller version um, here that would perform in the same way however um, I was looking for stability earlier on and because I'd had problems with two mesh point uh, generators I have a modular ring system so that can slot off and instead of a, uh, a 92 uh, teeth on that one I can have a 93 teeth and you can go for imagine the bearings fitted to that a three contact point uh, wave generator and although you lose some of the um, theoretical multiplier in the gear ratio actually these two um, performed the same um, at, before the motor stalled uh, and the challenges in this are to do with the t deformation in the belt as the the whole gear is loaded up. Um, the problem is I think partly to do with the, the extra flexibility of the, the, the rubber in the belt um, but also it's to do with the teeth profile and if you look at um, the um, HDD timing belt profile it's it's not a sawtooth uh, profile it's quite rounded and what we're looking for is a constant um, meshing for as much of the circle as possible except the point 
where the teeth um, glide past each other right at the uh, the, the extreme uh, of the the wave cycle to the sides and we're not getting that because of the tooth profile and the flexibility of the belt. One of the things that I put in this design on the back plate that's bolted to the NEMA 17 motor is this is a, an early version of that but it was a way of getting uh, rotational stiffness but at the same time allowing that uh, elliptical deformation to um, be in the belt at the whole way even right up to where the disc of the splined cup was. Um, where are we going next? Uh, well I think for now the strain wave element is at a bit of a dead end um, with the teeth profile and the softness of the rubber. However um, there could be a way forward to still use um, a high uh, ratio compact gearing for the kinds of applications you might have had in mind for this. So I took a break from using the uh, timing belts and I made this. This is a hypocycloid gear. It's got two uh, cycloid discs inside and you can see they uh, rotate um, using an eccentric um, cam, opposing uh, cams in the centre, um, pushing them out uh, and they rotate off these rollers on the outside. Uh, they oppose so that you get um, uh, one anti-vibration in higher speed systems but also I think that has something to do with keeping um, this central um, shaft uh, axis straight and allowing you to put load on this um, output ring here which is um, on a um, centred um, disc on the, which is bolted to the eccentric cams. Now these rollers um, are all bearings but some people have made them just by machining out the right shape in a recess and you can see how it scales up currently um, against the uh, the best of my attempts on the strain wave gear and this is what it looks like the ratios are far lower on this one this is an 11 to 1 ratio versus on the 2 mesh, uh, theoretically it was supposed to be a uh, 45 to 1 ratio and on the 3 mesh that would have been a 30 to 1 ratio. So much smaller ratios here, however um, it's performed the best out of the best I could do with that and my first attempt at one of these so I think this is going to be the way forward um, and in a second I'll, uh, I'll show you um, where I think this could go and be quite a neat fit with what we've learned from this project. So the, uh, the gearing ratio that you get is a, a function of the number of um, these uh, roller points on the outside of um, the ring called the ring pins or the ring bearings and the the cycloid discs uh, numbered nodes inside. So we've got 11 nodes on the discs inside and 12 uh, pins on the ring outside which uh, with the delta being 1 between 11 and 12 that's an 11 to 1 ratio. Now because the, uh, the timing belts give us potentially an opportunity to have far more of these effective ring pins on the outside and that's what I think um, the project should go next to explore and see whether we can realise some of the potential for a very high ratio given that this is a 70 tooth HTD uh, 3M belt we could be um, getting perhaps in the order of 20 to 40 times the torque ratio, not sure. At the end of the video I'll share some of the, um, the torque um, findings I've got for my measurements um, and I'll just let you watch the motion on this. As you can see it's a very slow progression. You're watching that outer ring, you see the line follow around there. This is the um, gerbil or gerbil man in the middle um, jog pendant controller that I made 
so that I'd have some way of having a nicely accelerated and decelerated input for the torque tests. Um, if you want to see details of that and maybe make your own, it's very simple. It's just an Arduino uh, Nano and a, a rotary encoder. Um, see the link below for the Hackaday project page. We'll start with the uh, 20 newton centimeter um, performance of what has uh, normally a 59 newton centimeter holding torque, and that's uh, what I measured the stepper as um, with the setup um, of a beam with a load on the end and uh, getting it to rotate from a hanging down position to the horizontal position. So that was then incrementally increasing the moment on the, on the motor. And uh, those are my calcs, they've stuck, spat out that it's uh, got 20 newton centimeters or 0.2 newton meters and the torque ratio is one because that's our baseline naked stepper motor. Moving on to the um, strain wave gears, um, I managed to get the best performance out of a three mesh uh, gear. Um, there was a bit of fine tuning to get the pressure on the belt correct to get that balance, but the, that uh, torque ratio of around 12 times the input torque um, that was being achieved on the baseline motor on its own uh, was the best I could do. If you look over here, my first hypercycloidal gear uh, that was supposed to have an 11 to 1 ratio um, actually ended up having an effective torque ratio of 13 and a half to one and uh, I've been guessing at what might be causing that um, uh, but one of the things that I do know is that I'm very happy with that um, it's clearly allowing this stepper motor to bring to bear more of its available torque and I look forward to seeing where we can go with hypercycloidal uh, designs in the future. Uh, so that's it for now. Uh, go down to the link below if you want to follow along or please do join in on the Hackaday project for any of these gears. Um, you'll be most welcome. I'm not looking to own any of this. I'd love it if um, a, a group of people could come up with something that would be really useful for, for all sorts of applications on this. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll try and post a project video next time I've got something worthwhile saying.